Hi guys, just want to welcome you out to our new series called Call to Arms. We started it last week and so we pray that it blesses you. And so we're going to be talking about spiritual warfare over the next few weeks and just understanding uh, the dimensions and how to be uh, successful in that. just want to say um, very quickly a few announcements. Don't forget, stay connected uh, online with our church. You can do that if you've prayed, giving your life to Christ. There is a, a tab that you can click to let us know you pray so we can get some resources over to you. Also, if you want to be part of our online connect groups, these are connect groups that we meet all over Wandsworth. Now, obviously, we're not meeting, we're not gathering physically, but we're gathering online uh, for Bible study, prayer, fellowship, games. And so if you want to be a part of that, and even if you're not in the Wandsworth area, but you, you know, you, you, you don't have uh, that Christian fellowship and you need it, and maybe you've recently uh, given your life to Christ, please go on there. Uh, we've got uh, connect group leaders that are poised and waiting uh, for you to contact them and they'll contact you and they'll be uh, really happy to bring you into one of the, one of our groups. Also, let's stay faithful in our giving. I want to say every time we really do appreciate and we say thank you to everybody's faithful giving. Uh, Wandsworth uh, members, they are givers, they are generous and so we celebrate that and we thank God for that. Um, if you are someone who used to give uh, physically in the building, you've not migrated to online, you're not updated yet and you're having problems with that, speak to one of our Connect Group leaders, they can show you uh, how to do this. It's very simple, uh, you know, we've put the, the, uh, the details up there and so it should be straightforward but if you have any problems, reach out to us, we can help you in that and so really do once again commend and say thank you to everyone who is faithfully uh, giving. Now is the time when we really do see people's faithfulness and uh, it really does bring joy uh, to us to know that God is still moving on people's hearts to give and to be uh, liberal like that. Uh, last thing, just want to say thanks to everyone who is sharing this content. They're sending it to their friends, their neighbors, their work colleagues, uh, send it to your enemy, send it to everybody. Uh, let's get the word out because people are, every week we're seeing people pray and every week we're seeing people join connect groups. And so even though we're not gathering, God is moving. And so I appreciate that. All right, let's get into the assignment for today. And so uh, this is sermon two in our series, Call to Arms. And so I want to say that uh, we need to understand spiritual warfare. The reason why we're doing this series is because we really do believe that it is so important for the Christian to understand spiritual warfare. As we said last week, it's in the scriptures and he highlights that we've got to understand spiritual warfare. See, it's through spiritual warfare that you understand how to take ground. That means how you increase, how you move forward, how you uh, move into new dimensions of what God has for you, move, new promises, uh, new promotions, uh, new anointing, new, new things. It comes from spiritual warfare because you've got to take ground. The enemy is occupying something that you've got to push him back. Um, not just taking new ground, spiritual warfare is going to help you to keep what you've got, to defend what you've got, because the enemy, just because you've uh, reached a certain point, he hasn't, uh, that's it, let's give up, let's go home. No, 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 he's going to come and seek for a season to come and attack you. And so in this uh, battle that we are in, in this war that we are in, and each battle that we're winning, is that you're going to need courage, and we spoke about that last uh, session, but more than courage, you're going to have to, you're going to need some knowledge. You're going to have to know how to do battle. And so I want to preach a sermon, stand against the wiles of the devil. And so we're going to get some knowledge today on how we are going to be successful in our Christian campaign of spiritual warfare. And so the text is still Ephesians 6, and this week it's going to be uh, verse 11. And then it says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to st may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And so that's where we get the, 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 um, the title for the sermon where he says that you may be able to stand against the wiles of uh, the devil. Let's pray. Father, we just ask you right now for your grace, your mercy. Father, train us up. Father, that we can take ground. Train us up, Father, that we can keep what you've promised us. Father, I pray that we would be full of courage and full of knowledge. And Father, give us wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people say amen. And at home you say amen. Um, let me start by saying we need to know, you need to know your enemy. 
You need to know. And he says this, the wiles of the devil. And so this is the King, New King James Version. And so the wiles, we don't usually use those words, wiles, but what it means is schemes, craftiness, deceit, cunning, his techniques. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11, lest Satan should have taken advantage of us, uh, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And Paul is saying we should not be ignorant. So the opposite of ignorant is knowing. You should know your enemy. Don't be ignorant of your enemy or how he, how he moves. And so one of the things that we need to know about the enemy and the knowledge that we need to understand about the enemy is that he targets our weaknesses. This is where he targets our weaknesses. And this is a very basic strategy. This strategy is across all different uh, conflicts and all different ages, is that when soldiers want to take a city, they're not looking for where the most fortified, strongest point of the city is or the highest part of the wall. They want to go to where the weakest part is. And the, the enemy is no different. It's like in boxing, they say styles make fights. And what they're saying is, is that the style, my style can uh, 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 beat your style because there's a weakness in your style, whether it's your reach or your lack of movement, but it's your weakness that exposes you to my style. So I'll, win, I'll beat you. And this is how the enemy is. He adapts his style to your weakness. And so he'll adapt whatever he's doing. The way he's attacking you is different than the way he's going to attack me. And we see, uh, I remember hearing in history how the, uh, the French they had come out of World War I fighting against the Germans. And so they had they designed this defense mechanism. But the defense mechanism was based upon World War I technology. But in World War II, German tank technology had gone, had, had developed, had increased. And so once the Germans knew how to uh, optimize on, the, on the, the French weakness, they took the whole country. And so the same is with the enemy, is that he's looking for the weakness to get in. And so... The question is, where are you weak? Where are you weak? We see this with Judas. Judas' weakness was money. We saw that the way he was operating with money with Jesus, and then he sells Jesus out for money. That was his weakness. What is your weakness? Is your weakness lust? Is your weakness pride? What is your weakness? The, 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 the thing where many Christians are defeated is they know other people's weakness, but they don't know their own weakness. These are people that come in and they're always criticizing others, but they never see their own weakness. These are people that are very spiritual, always want to give a word or speak about a Bible scripture, but your own weaknesses, you're oblivious to them. You're oblivious to your weaknesses in your marriage. You're oblivious to your weaknesses uh, in your attitude. You're oblivious to your weaknesses uh, in, in, in your own life, in your own ministry, but you see everybody else's weakness. Listen, success in this campaign is not knowing everyone else's weakness. You better know your own weakness because that's how the enemy is going to attack you. It's not only where are you weak, when are you weak? Um, the enemy attacks at our weakest moments. And some, sometimes what that means is, is that when, we've, when, when we're going for a battle, um, Jesus, the devil comes to Jesus when Jesus has finished fasting. Jesus fasted for 40 days and the enemy comes and tries to um, tempt him, attack him at that point. And this is how the enemy will come to us at the point when we, when we have lack, when we, when we don't have what we want. When we've been single for a long time, the enemy brings in someone to pull us away from Christ. A relationship that is not what God would have us be involved in. He wants to bring us uh, in that. When we feel a bit lonely and uh, nothing's going on and in a... We get invited uh, to a family gathering and you realize it's a rave now and, you know, you go there, but next minute you're, you're doing the bogle or whatever it is. You know, this is, this is how it works, that the enemy is looking for those moments when you're low. You know, when we've ever had a fast and we do a three-day fast and uh, you go shopping after the fast, you buy things that you just usually wouldn't eat because that's not the time to go shopping, you know, to do your month shopping because you, you, you just come out of something and that's how the enemy is. And so what are, you, what are you waiting for right now? What are you praying about right now? What does your heart desire and you still haven't seen it come to fruition? Be careful because that is when the enemy wants to attack, not just on the low point, but also sometimes on a high point that the enemy will look to attack us when we're at that, that peak, that pinnacle, that place of blessing. Uh, King David falls the greatest when he had rose the highest. He's got victory uh, in his 
uh, life. He's no longer running from Saul. He's the king. He's not in a battle. He's in his palace. He's in his house. He's, in, he's on top of the roof. And then he has power and he has servants and he sees this woman bathing naked and he brings her to his house, commits adultery, murders her husband, lies about the whole thing. This wasn't at a place where he was at a low point. This is at a high point. I remember when we were, uh, we used to play rounders at the park. Some of you remember this when we went to Battersea Park. It's very, very early, early days many many years ago and so we're at the park and we're playing rounders and someone hits the ball and it goes high up in the air and as this ball is going high up it's like no one's going to be able to catch this and there is one sister who's poised underneath it and we're all thinking she'll never catch this she hasn't catched one ball the whole game and the ball comes down it's zipping down fast now and goes into her hand and she catches it and we all go crazy she goes crazy she's jumping in the air and she's celebrating and we're celebrating no way was you going to catch that and people are making a big thing about it but the problem is while she's celebrating with the ball in her hand the person uh, uh, that are, are, are running on the bases run right past her see she was so distracted by her success that she forgot she was on the team and how we can be sometimes is that we're distracted by the success that God has given us personally, the job, uh, the house, the car, the marriage. But we've become distracted. And this is just like with David, how the enemy sleeps in and starts to steal things and attack us in this area. Sometimes when you're at the most fruitful when God is using you and people are getting saved and maybe even this season, uh, God is raising your profile. You know, because we're all online and we're doing everything and everything is there and people are celebrating you and speaking to you and all of these things. But you've got to be mindful because this is where the enemy wants to come in. This is how it is. And so it's the where the enemy and when the enemy, when we're weak and where we're weak. It's not just that, it's who are we weak with? Who are we weak with? And this is another place where the enemy, our weaknesses are other people sometimes. The Bible shows us that Peter tries to stop Jesus from going to the cross. Peter's his friend. Peter is Jesus' friend. Yeah, he's his disciple, but he's his friend. He's one of his closest uh, people in Jesus' life. And he's trying to stop Jesus from doing the will of God. Job and, and his wife, his wife, Job's wife, you know, just curse God and die. And so there could be people in your life right now and you're realizing that when you're around them that have an influence in your life you're hearing that people are saying things about you or putting things up online or talking to people about you and you know you you want to live at this spiritual place but these things are happening down here and people are saying things to pull you down to this place and this is how the enemy we become weak some of us you know we, we can serve god forever but if somebody does something or says something, we lose the plot. Some of you is family members. When there's, you, you can be serving Jesus as soon as a bit of beef in your family. This is how the enemy attacks us. He attacks us at our weakness. See, his most powerful weapon of choice is lies. This is what he uses. He hits us on our weakness, but what he uses is lies. That's his most powerful powerful weapon see the devil does the most damage by just making you believe one of his lies that's all he has to do is make you believe one of his lies we see this in genesis that adam and eve believe one of the lies of the devil and that is it all sin all corruption all everything comes in because of believing in that lie um if i was to uh, if i was to uh, say to some of you right now and I, I was to convince you and you'd believe what i'm about to say if i was to convince you and i was to say nobody likes you everybody hates you if you believe that lie your whole life would change every relationship would change anyone that would text you or call you or offer help to you because you believe that lie your whole life your whole life has changed. If I was to convince you that you cannot do nothing and anything you do will fail, if I can convince that of you, you would do nothing. You would not. It would kill every dream, every ambition, every spiritual uh, vision that you would have. It would be killed. And I could control your whole life. I've changed your whole life. I've, I've corrupted your whole life just by making you believe 
two simple lies. See, the Bible says that um, the devil is the father of lies. That's what he is. He is the father of lies. And so what the devil does is he uses lie to get in. And then once that lie is in you, it doesn't just end there. It starts to eat away at you. That's how the enemy works. It's like the carpenter bee. It's like a, an insect that uh, eats its way into wood and then eats out the wood from the inside. And then before you know it, uh, the structure is collapsing. But if you looked on the outside, you would just see a small hole. The carpenter bee, the devil's lies are like that. They make a small entrance into our life. We've just believed a lie. We don't know when we started to believe it, but it's entered in. And now it's eaten away at us. And what happens is once that lie is eaten away at you, and some of you, there's lies eaten away at you. And this is why you're losing dominion in your work with God, because there's a lie eating away at you. This is why you're losing ground. You're no longer taking ground. You got saved and believed God you was taking ground, but now you're moving back because there's a lie that you've started to believe and it's eating away at you. This is why the, you people lose destiny. See, what the, what the devil's main focus of his lie is always about God. The devil will always lie about God. And what he will do is, and just like he did in Genesis, he lied about God. He will... Major on the minors and minor on the majors. What that means is he's going to make small things big and big things small. He's going to lie about those things. He's going to, you know, there's people that will debate all day and go online and get excited about uh, 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 Jerusalem. Should Jerusalem be pronounced like this? Should Jerusalem be pronounced like that? Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us to debate Jerusalem and how pronouncing J's and Jerusalem and all of those things. It doesn't tell us that. But the same people that will debate, make a small thing big, are the same people many times that make a big thing small. You ask them about being born again and holiness and uh, uh, what Christ has done for us and who Christ is and the atoning work of the cross. And they've never studied it. They've never looked into it. But they want to talk about this because it's a lie. This is how the devil moves. That he always wants to twist and manipulate the th something about God so you do not see God clearly. He wants you to see God distortedly. Like one of those fairground mirrors where it's warped. And that's how it is. He will make people look at God's grace. His lie that when you look at God's grace... People think that God's grace is just there and they don't need to repent. That God just loves everybody and God, we're all children of God and that's how the world is. And so I can just live anyhow I want and I'm going to die and make heaven my home. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says that you've got to repent. That God's love and mercy and grace is there for you to repent. That God's love is calling you to, to turn to him. But if you refuse to turn to him, you will be lost. Not because of God's will. God is not willing that any should perish. But all should come to repentance, all should turn to him. But if you don't, the devil will also point out God's judgment, God's righteousness, God's holiness, and say, yeah, there's no hope for you. There's no hope to repent. The devil will lie to you and say, you've committed the unpardonable sin. There is no hope for you. You might as well quit, give up. The devil will point out you've sinned too many times. You've worn out God's grace. You've worn out his forgiveness. You've played the game and that's it. It's over for you. And he will convince you of that. But when the Bible says that God is rich in mercy and grace, that God's anger is but for a moment, but his love and mercy and grace is forever, that God sent Christ for sinners, not for uh, uh, the perfect. God sent Christ for sinners, that if you would admit that you're a sinner, that God's grace is there to forgive you. Yes, he will judge sin, but he sent Christ so that you could come out of your sin and God could see you perfect in Christ. That is the truth and that is the good news. But so many times the devil has lied to people and they, they just don't understand this. See, the biggest lie that the enemy tells us, the most effective lie, should I say, the one that has the most effect that I've seen is... Uh, the lie that you can't do it. This is a lie that kills more marriages because people think, I can't do this no more, pastor. 
This is the lie that kills most ministries. I can't do this anymore. This is the lie that kills disciples, kills uh, uh, ministries, kills churches. The lie that says, you know what? I don't think I can do this anymore. And the reason why this lie is effective is because this lie has some truth in it. This lie actually has some truth in it. And what I mean by that is that we can't do certain things because of our weakness. So that's true. I can't do it because of my weakness. But this truth is not the whole truth. And so this is, this is where the enemy gets people. And this is where we got to know how he works. When the devil comes to Jesus, he brings the word, but he twists it. So it, there's some truth in a lie. See, if I told you that I came from the moon, I just appeared on the moon and I came to earth, no one would believe that. But if I told you I was born in America, maybe some people I could convince that because nobody appears on the moon. There's no truth in that. But people are born in America. But I wasn't born in America. So it's a lie about truth. That is where the enemy gets us. He gives us a bit of truth, but it's a lie. And what he tells us is this, you can't because you're weak. And the truth is, we are weak. That's where the truth is. And so he's been lying to some of you, saying you can't because you're weak. You can't because you're weak. And you've been uh, listening to that lie and it's eaten away at you. But it's not the whole truth. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproach and in need, in persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. For where I am weak, then I am strong. See, uh, uh, this, 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 this lie of the devil is that you can't because you're weak is not the whole truth. Yes, I'm weak. That is true. But the Bible says in Christ, I'm strong where I'm weak. See, this changes the whole dynamic is that the Bible is showing me this is even though that I am weak, I can be strong in Christ. See, some of you, this lie has been eaten away at you. The devil has fed you a lie that you can't. And that thing has been eaten away at you from the inside. It's been eating your faith. Some of you have been far from the word, far from prayer, far from fellowship. Because this lie has been eaten at you. And you've been thinking, you know what, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it. Can I make it? This marriage, can it make it? This is a lie from the enemy. This is a lie from the wicked one. And it's been eaten at you. And sometimes even out of your own mouth, you've said, I can't do this. I, I, I can't be free. I want to tell you, the Bible says in John 8 verse 36, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus says, you are already free. Listen to me. You are already free, Christian, child of the Most High God. You are already free. Let me give you an analogy to help you understand this. Imagine you see a man and he was, from his birth, he was placed in a cage. From his birth, he's been placed in this cage. And as he grew up in his teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, he tried to escape, shake the door. But the lock on the cage is unbreakable and the bars are unpenetrable. And so he's left to live in this cage. And after a while, he just retreated to a corner of the cage without no hope of ever being freed or escaping. And then one day someone comes along and they smash the lock and they open the door and they cry out, come out. But the guy replies, I can't. I'm in a cage. And the, the voice comes back. No, you can. I've broken the lock. I've opened the door. Come out. And the guy replies, no, I can't. Because he hears a lie being spoken to him. You are still in the cage. You will never be free. But the voice that breaks the lock says, you are already free. Christian, I want to tell you, Christ has broken the lock. He has opened the door. That you are already free. You are already free from uh, uh, fear and depression. You're already free. Now, you may not feel free and the devil may lie to you and say that you'll never be free and you can't be free. But the reality of what Christ has done for you, you are already free from fear. You are already free from depression. 
you're already free. There are some of you, you're already free from pornography. You're already free. You, you, you've struggled with this thing. You've battled with this thing. You, you've started to believe, I, I don't think I can do it. I want to tell you, you are already free from it. The lock is broken. The door is open. Rise up in faith and stand in the position that you are. See, God has sent his word and his word is crying out to us in the cage. I know you've lived in sin all your life. I know that you've lived with these bars and this lot all your life. But I sent my son and he has broken that. Come out. And only by faith we've got to choose. But the enemy is still telling us, no, you'll never be free. There are people, you are free of anger already. You are free from anxiety. You are free. Whatever has had you bound, no matter if it's been 10 years or 110 years, once you accept Christ, you are free. Anything or anyone that tells you anything different is a lie. I'm saying, let me say this, I don't care who they are, I don't care what they know, I don't care where they come from, anybody that tells you Christian that you can't or it won't, that is a lie. People are trying to poison people with fear. And people are trying to tell people, oh, this can't work and that won't work. And look what's happening in the world and look what's happening in society. And did you hear about this conspiracy and that conspiracy? I want to tell you who the sun sets free is free indeed. Let me close with this scripture. Ephesians 1 verse 9. Now, let me give you the background of this scripture because there's a lot of truth packed into this and it would take me weeks and weeks and weeks to give you everything that's in here but uh, i believe we can bring out some truth that will help us tonight paul is going to say that this is who you are this is the power in you he's going to explain how much power is in you so when anybody tries to put fear in you or tell you that you can't or it won't listen to what paul has already told us the word of god says ephesians 1 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? If you believe, there is power in you. According to the workings of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the, uh, in the heavenly places. Uh, Paul is making this argument and he's saying this. Listen, this is the power that is in you. The same power that rose Christ from the grave. Now, raising Christ from the grave is not just giving him life. It wasn't that, that God, just, God the Father just gave him life, like he, he just gave him life. That's No, no, no. You're missing the point here. The point is that he raised him from the dead. That means when Adam sinned, death entered in. All darkness came upon mankind. All wickedness, darkness, evil, dominion came upon mankind, pushing mankind down. Mankind is under that. We can't get free. No man has ever got freed. When Christ died, Christ broke through that. To raise Christ from the grave, God had to break through death, break through all demonic forces and darkness and everything was shattered. And the Bible says that same power that breaks through for Christ breaks through for you, breaks through for me. What is it that... I can't break through, can't break out of. What is it that the enemy can put on me? There is nothing. And he tells us that he says, far above all principalities and powers, mights, dominions. He's saying there is nothing. You could put the whole of hell on top of you and nothing would hold you down. Nothing will stop you when Christ is it. There is no might, there is no dominion. Every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. He's saying there is not one person who has ever lived or lives now who will ever live that can come against what God can do in your life. There's people right now troubling you. Why do you let these people trouble you when the Bible says they, no one should trouble you because you are free in Christ? Why would you let this sin trouble you and keep you down? Why would you let depression and loneliness and anxiety and temptation and all of these things keep us down when the Bible says this is not who you are? You need to understand, know your enemy. 
Know that he attacks you in the weakness. Knows that he hits you with a lie. But the truth is I am free and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That I am more than a conqueror and I'm ready for battle and I'm going to take ground and I'm going to keep what God has already given me in Jesus name. Let's rise up. Let's take ground. Let's be the soldiers that God has called us to be and let's walk in victory. I pray this has blessed you. Stay in your word. Share this with somebody. Be encouraged. God bless. I pray that this message, call to arms, be strong in the Lord, has strengthened you and helped you. Uh, this is the goal of these messages on spiritual warfare. Maybe there's some of you that you realize you're not a Christian, you're not right with God, and you're fighting the, this fight of your life by yourself in your own strength and you're failing. I want to tell you, you can ask Jesus into your life. You can tag him and get him into your battle. And it's as simple as just uh, repenting and asking him in. Now, I'm going to put a prayer up on the screen. And if you say this from your heart, we're going to believe that God will hear that. The words are not what saves you. It's your heart. But the words express, express what's going on in your heart. And so uh, follow along. Say it from your heart. We're going to believe God that he will hear you. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Help me to live for you the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I believe if you agree with that prayer and you said that prayer from your heart, that God hears that prayer. And as you are, wherever you are right now, God has saved you. He is beginning a new uh, work in your life. And so let us know about that. Click underneath, there is a, a link and that lets us know what God is doing through our ministry, but also gives us the opportunity to connect with you. Uh, if you are a Christian and you need uh, to connect with us, obviously we're not meeting in the building anymore, but we still have online connect groups. And so there is also a link for that. We're believing God that in this time where we're all uh, uh, transitioning in a diff doing life differently we can still have victory and we can still win the war in the spiritual realm and believe God for all that he's got for us and so lastly I just want to say thank you for uh, uh, watching this we pray that you was blessed strengthened and encouraged please share it with other people that you believe that it could bless them as well and open their eyes to what God can do in their life. If you want to keep up to date with more and more of all the uh, sermons and everything that we're putting out, feel free to subscribe to our channel and we pray that God will bless you. Amen.